my focus has been for years on really expedition and adventure filmmaking. We've been to third world countries, you know, we've been from Indonesia to Alaska, and then down filming in the heart of Death Valley, at Badwater Death Valley. And from there, we've kind of garnered an award-winning production company in DreamQuest. Little did we know when I spent time in Raleigh, North Carolina, I actually stopped in to pick up a book. It was for a flight coming back to LA, and the book happened to be Fire on the Beach. And it is the definitive book on the history of the P. Island Lifesavers. And on the way back, having read the book, I absolutely fell in love with the story. I mean, it was just an American story about heroes. And the heroes happened to be seven African Americans at the time of just post-slavery in the Civil War. And little did I know at the time or on the flight back that that would really kind of change the way that I looked at filmmaking. One of the things I did when I got back to L.A. was I had to research. We had to research. This story was so incredible. Who had done a feature film on Pea Island? Who had produced a documentary on Pea Island? I'm reading the book. I have to see the film. I had to make this film. There had never been a film told about the history of Pea Island. And at that moment, we knew that it was something that we had to further research and we had to produce. There was absolutely no doubt about that. One of the things as a documentary film producer is when we're producing a film, we have to do three things. We have to find archive still footage. We have to find video or film. And then we have to find descendants or key people that we can bring together to interview to make this film possible. And, of course, with Pea Island, most of the true heroes have passed away, except for one man, and that man happened to be Herb Collins. And Herb is the last man to lock the station at Pea Island, and we were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to film him. And shortly after our filming, Herb passed away. One of the things in filming Rescue Men that I wanted to do specifically was I wanted to try to cast the people that were local to the Outer Banks. And for those, you know, that watch Rescue Men, probably one of the most important things to know is the voiceover talent, the voices that you hear in the film, are actually what is termed Outer Bankers. And of course, being from Los Angeles or Hollywood, uh, we could have hired anybody to do the voices. But we didn't want that. I think one of the most incredible things in this film is a lot of the, the graphics and the special effects that the people will see. I mean, one of them probably was our graphics guy, Pony Horton, just really brought together a feeling of what I think these guys went through and really brought in the effects to make you feel as though almost as you're actually there living in that era. What is really amazing to me is that P. Island happened from, say, 1880 to the 1940s. And I think what is amazing is not only did no one produce a film on the story of P. Island until now in 2010, but I think what's most important is these were American heroes. Regardless of race, regardless of color, these men lent out a hand and risked their life to save a fellow human being. And if we, all, if we sit back and we think about post-slavery, post the Civil War, African Americans, they manned a station all to themselves, and they were willing to go out to rescue a fellow human being and lend out that hand when normally it would have never have been taken, is to me truly remarkable. And I think probably what's even more remarkable is that these men never received their just due. They never received the gold life-saving medal until the authors of the book, Fire on the Beach, David Wright and David Zobie, 
physically went out and tried to do what was right, to try to get them this award. And what's amazing is a hundred years later, in 1996, these men finally received their due and they were awarded the Gold Life Saving Medal. What have I personally taken out of the filming of Rescue Men? That, again, it doesn't matter. Are we black? Are we white? Are we Asian? Are we Hispanic? It doesn't matter. These men, the Pea Island crew, were the firefighters of today. Just like today, when the bell goes off, these men, regardless, rush out, lights blaring, siren blaring, to save our fellow human beings. And ultimately, that's exactly what this P. Allen crew did. And I find that utterly remarkable. That's a good question. How do we, um, how do we top rescue men? I mean, there's never another film that can take the place of the story of P. Island. This is really too important in American history. And again, it's been forgotten for years. But for us, our next film is going to basically take us back to our roots. It's a film called The Grand. And it is a documentary film on the history of the Grand Canyon. And so we will be spending a month inside the Grand Canyon uh, on rafts. Uh, we will be literally filming from the head of the Grand Canyon, uh, running the rapids, uh, covering the history and the Indians and everything that the Grand Canyon is about all the way to the end. And that'll be a quite a substantial project, but definitely something totally different than what we had with Rescue Men. Man,